Hi there, and welcome back to Lynn Reads, the channel where we share powerful insights and personal growth lessons through great books. When I first picked up the Tao of Physics, I expected a book about science. Instead, I found a br bridge between the rational world of physics and the timeless wisdom of the East, and it completely changed the way I look at reality. So, if you enjoy what you hear and want to dive deeper, we've included a link to the book in the description below. Now, let's get started. The Tao of Physics 1975 is a groundbreaking work that explores the deep connections between modern physics, a hard science, and the spiritual enlightenment found in Eastern mysticism. The book highlights fascinating parallels between Einstein's theory of relativity, quantum mechanics, and the philosophical foundations of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Taoism. Fritjof Capra holds a PhD in theoretical physics from the University of Vienna. Beyond being a celebrated author, he is also a respected lecturer on the philosophical dimensions of modern science. His other notable works include The Turning Point, Uncommon Wisdom, and The Web of Life. Science and religion are often seen as two entirely opposite realms. In the Western tradition, there is usually a sharp divide between rational thought and the abstract, intuitive teachings of the East. However, as this book demonstrates, when we compare some of the core insights of Eastern religions, particularly Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism, with the findings of modern physics, striking similarities emerge. Whether it s the fundamental interconnectedness of all particles in the universe or the nature of space and time in Einstein's relativity, Eastern mystics had intuited concepts that modern science only began uncovering millennia later. Although physics has advanced greatly since the book's first publication in 1975, the Tao of physics remains an inspiring source for both believers and skeptics alike. What could modern physics possibly have in common with Eastern mysticism? At first glance, the answer seems to be nothing at all. Physics is a rational, highly structured discipline expressed through the language of mathematics. Eastern mysticism, on the other hand, grounded in religious traditions such as Hinduism, Buddhism and Taoism, is spiritual and rooted in meditative experience. Yet both domains emerge from humanity's pursuit of knowledge, which can be divided into two forms, rational knowledge and intuitive knowledge. While these forms are distinct, both are present in science and mysticism alike. For example, science is traditionally seen as the domain of rational knowledge, using measurement and quantification to analyze material reality. Mysticism, by contrast, is concerned with intuitive knowledge, which transcends intellectual reasoning and sensory perception. Mystics seek a direct non-rational experience of reality through meditation, but physics also relies on intuition. Without creative leaps of imagination, scientists would never arrive at new theories or groundbreaking discoveries. Similarly, Eastern mysticism contains rational elements like physicists. Mystics are careful observers. The difference is that they study their own inner consciousness rather than external experiments. Of course, fundamental differences remain. Western science has historically been shaped by the belief that mind and body are separate. Entities a notion dating back to Greek philosophy. Democritus, for instance, drew a sharp line between matter and spirit. This idea became central to Western thought, laying the foundation for the dualism of mind and matter. In contrast, Eastern philosophy begins with the assumption of the unity of all things. For centuries, Eastern mystics have believed that profound spiritual experiences shape the way they perceive the universe. Interestingly, physicists of the early 20th century found themselves arriving at a similar realization when they began to explore the atomic world. In fact, modern physics has completely revolutionized the traditional worldview of science. To understand this transformation, let us briefly trace the development of physics from its classical roots. Classical physics was built largely on the foundation laid by Isaac Newton. It was based on the idea of absolute space and time, the existence of solid, indivisible particles, and the conviction that the behavior and properties of physical objects could be determined objectively independent of the observer. Modern physics, however, introduced a radically new approach that shook the very foundations of classical science. For example, in 1905, Einstein's theory of relativity showed that space and time are not absolute but relative, and inseparably linked. Even more striking was his famous equation, E equals mc, where E is energy, m is mass, and c is the constant speed of light, which revealed that matter itself is simply another form of energy. Quantum theory went even further, describing the astonishingly counterintuitive behavior of atoms and subatomic particles. According to this theory, the movement of subatomic particles can never be predicted with certainty. Instead, only tendencies or probabilities of their occurrence can be calculated. Moreover, quantum mechanics insists that reality cannot be described in purely objective terms because the very act of observation influences the behavior of the particles being observed. These discoveries confronted physicists with paradoxes that echo those long recognized by Eastern mystics. This resemblance is most vividly illustrated in Zen, con seemingly illogical riddles designed to break conventional patterns of thought and push practitioners into a higher state of awareness beyond reason. 
Only in this elevated state does the riddle truly reveal its meaning. A classic example is the question, what is the sound of one hand clapping? Thus, the parallels between modern physics and Eastern mysticism become clearer. In the next chapter, we will delve deeper into the specific doctrines of Eastern mysticism. Hinduism and Buddhism are two major religions that originated in ancient India. At their core, both traditions pursue the same lofty spiritual goal. The attainment of profound mystical experience, Hinduism first emerged in ancient India and draws its spiritual guidance primarily from the Vedas, a collection of hymns composed by anonymous sages between 1500 and 500 BC. The central message of Hinduism is that all things and all events in the world are simply different manifestations of one ultimate reality. This ultimate reality is known as Brahman, the inner essence or soul of all existence. It is a concept that cannot be grasped through intellectual reasoning but can only be experienced directly. Through liberating practices such as yoga, liberation in this sense means recognizing the unity and harmony of nature, understanding that all phenomena on earth are part of the same underlying reality. Hindus also hold that nature is a dynamic world, in which all forms and structures are fluid, flexible, and constantly changing. Similarly, Buddhism embraces the ideas of oneness, interconnectedness, flow, and ceaseless change. Over time, Buddhism became a cornerstone of spiritual practice across Asia, including in China, Korea, and Japan. While sharing many points of similarity with Hinduism, Buddhism differs in its origin. It was founded by Siddhartha Gautama, better known as the Buddha. In Buddhism, the concept of Dharmakaya, the cosmic body of truth, parallels the Hindu notion of Brahman. Buddhism also presents the idea of liberation, known as Nirvana state of enlightenment, in which all perceptions of separation dissolve, revealing the fundamental unity of all life. Just as in Hinduism, this state of consciousness cannot be conveyed through intellectual thought. Moreover, Buddhism shares with Hinduism the belief that the world is in constant transformation. The Buddha himself declared, All things arise and all things pass away. We have now explored the philosophies of Hinduism and Buddhism. Next, we will turn to the spiritual worldview of ancient Chinese traditions. Ancient Chinese thought revolved around two main dimensions. The social focusing on ethics, governance, and community life and the mystical which elevated worldly concerns into a higher state of consciousness. This duality reflected both the pragmatic and the spiritual aspects of early Chinese culture. By the 6th century BCE, these dimensions crystallized into distinct schools of philosophy. Confucianism, which centered on social organization, and Taoism, which emphasized observation of nature. Because Taoism is more mystical in nature, it draws an especially close comparison to modern physics. Founded by Laozi Taoism teaches that there is an ultimate reality underlying and unifying the world, much like the concepts in Hinduism and Buddhism. In Taoism, this ultimate reality is called the Tao, or the Way, which is equivalent to Brahman in Hinduism and Dharmakaya in Buddhism. The Tao is regarded as the essence of the universe. The Tao also embodies the dynamic ever-changing nature of all things, like Hinduism and Buddhism. Taoism emphasizes flow and ceaseless transformation. Moreover, Taoism identifies recurring patterns in this constant change. Laozi famously declared, to go far is to return. The most recognizable expression of these patterns is the concept of yin and yang, the foundation of Taoist thought. According to this view, the Tao arises from the interplay of opposing forces light and dark, male and female, heaven and earth. Ultimately, like Hinduism and Buddhism, Taoism seeks to cultivate intuitive wisdom rather than rigid theoretical knowledge. These similarities bring us back to the intriguing parallels between Eastern mysticism and modern physics, which we will explore further in the next section. In daily life, we tend to divide the world into separate experiences, objects, or events. We distinguish between tables, chairs, and minds in order to navigate our environment more easily. But in Eastern mystical traditions such as Hinduism, Buddhism, and Taoism, such distinctions are considered illusions. None of these separations are fundamental features of nature. Instead, these traditions hold that the universe is characterized by an underlying unity. Remarkably, this same idea of fundamental unity lies at the heart of modern physics. One of the clearest examples comes from atomic physics and the concepts of wave and particle. A wave can be described as a periodic oscillation in time and space, characterized by its frequency. A particle, by contrast, has a definite position at any given moment, and its motion can be described by velocity. Yet, according to modern physics, all matter at the atomic level possesses both wave and particle characteristics. Depending on the context, matter can behave as either. For instance, light exists as photons particles of light but when these photons travel through space, they also exhibit the properties of oscillating electric fields, behaving like waves. In other words, in atomic physics, reality transcends seemingly opposing categories. Similarly, in Eastern mysticism, yin and yang represent opposite aspects of a unified whole. And this is not the only similarity. 
Both modern physics and Eastern mysticism also acknowledge the interconnectedness of all things in nature. In quantum physics, scientists have realized that the properties of subatomic particles cannot be determined independently of the act of observation. This means that changing the way something is observed or measured also changes its characteristics. The observed particle, therefore, is not an isolated object but an expression of interaction between the observer and the observed. This highlights the relational nature of all things in the universe. In classical physics, space and time were regarded as two separate concepts. Specifically, this tradition assumed that human beings existed in a three-dimensional space, independent of time. However, with the rise of modern physics, this notion of separation was challenged. Einstein's theory of relativity merged space and time, offering a new perspective that both are relative rather than absolute. This discovery transformed the way we perceive the world. In fact, the idea that the observation of space depends on the relative position of the observer had long been recognized. For example, from a distance, a blade of grass may appear tiny, but up close, it looks much larger. Yet, the same principle had never been applied to time. Einstein shattered this assumption by proving that time, too, is relative. Light requires a certain amount of time to travel from its source to the eyes of the observer. Thus, the farther away an event occurs, the later it is perceived by the observer. This insight introduced a fourth dimension time added to the three known dimensions of space. Instead of existing independently, time is intrinsically linked to space. As a result, space and time cannot exist separately. Space is no longer a three-dimensional arena independent of time, but rather fused with it into a new concept known as space-time. This unified concept draws a striking parallel between modern physics and Eastern philosophy. Eastern thinkers have long intuited the interwoven nature of space and time. Consider the Avatamsaka school of Buddhism. The Avatamsaka Sutra, its foundational text, describes enlightenment as a state of awareness that penetrates through both space and time. The renowned Japanese Buddhist philosopher D.T. Suzuki even explained that in enlightenment, there can be no space without time, and no time without space. The universe, as seen through the eyes of both physicists and mystics, is a realm in constant motion and transformation. This is a familiar theme in the mystical worldview of the East, and now, it has become a central truth of modern physics especially quantum physics. In quantum physics, the study of the atomic and subatomic world, matter is never at rest. Subatomic particles are always in motion. This is because whenever these particles are confined within a small space, they begin to move continuously and the smaller the space, the faster they move. This can be considered a fundamental instability of matter at the subatomic level. Modern physics also asserts that the universe itself is constantly expanding and in motion. This expansion was first discovered in 1929 by American astronomer Edwin Hubble and has since become one of the foundational insights of modern cosmology. As a result, physicists now believe that the universe originated over 10 billion years ago from the Big Bang. Some suggest that this expansion will continue indefinitely, while others theorize that it may eventually slow down and reverse, leading the universe to collapse back in on itself. The latter model describes an oscillating universe one that expands and contracts in cycles. Finally, according to relativity, Subatomic particles also display dynamic properties, returning to Einstein's famous formula, E equals mc. It not only asserts the equivalence of mass and energy but also implies that continuous transformations occur between them. For example, when a tree is burned, its wood is transformed into energy in the form of heat, while simultaneously producing matter in the form of carbon dioxide, water vapor, and other molecules. In classical physics, matter and space were always regarded as two separate entities, However, in the 19th century, Michael Faraday and James Clerk Maxwell challenged this notion with the discovery of the concept of the field. The first to be identified was the electric field of condition in space, created by a charged object that exerts force on any other charged object within that space. But the real breakthrough came when the concept of the field was connected to gravity. As a result, in modern physics, matter and space are no longer seen as distinct. Through the lens of relativity, the gravitational field naturally arises within curved space surrounding massive objects such as planets, the field docent T merely fill and bend space it is the very curvature of space itself. According to Einstein's theory, matter and gravitational fields cannot be separated from the curved space in which they exist. Thus matter and space must be seen as a single, inseparable unity. The concept of the field applies not only to large-scale bodies like the Sun, but also to the microscopic world of subatomic particles. In this domain, physicists refer to quantum fields, where the distinction between particle and space becomes blurred. Within these fields, particles are nothing more than temporary, localized concentrations of energy ephemeral excitations of the field itself. Surprisingly, quantum fields echo the insights of Eastern philosophy. In Eastern mysticism, the fundamental reality of all phenomena is described as an invisible, empty space. 
In Hinduism, the Brahman, the ultimate reality, is often portrayed as void like. In Buddhism, it is expressed through unyet emptiness. In Taoism, the essence of the universe is described as formless and empty. Yet, Brahman, Anyet, and the Tao are not mere voids. They represent infinite creative potential just like the quantum field, which gives rise to countless forms of matter and phenomena. The rational, logical structure of modern physics shares unexpected resonances with the spiritual philosophies of Eastern mysticism. Though the two approaches are undeniably different, they converge on two fundamental principles, the unity of all things and the ever-changing nature of the universe. Reading the Tao of Physics by Fritz F. Capra is like standing at the crossroads of science and spirituality, where the rational logic of physics meets the profound wisdom of Eastern philosophy. What struck me most is how to seemingly different paths, the scientific pursuit of truth and the spiritual quest for enlightenment can converge upon remarkably similar insights about reality. Capra shows us that modern physics, through relativity and quantum theory, has revealed a universe that is dynamic, interconnected, and inseparable. At the same time, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Taoism have long emphasized the unity of existence, the fluidity of change, and the illusory nature of separateness. It's fascinating to realize that centuries of meditation and introspection led to conclusions that echo what today's most advanced equations suggest. For me, the book is not just about bridging science and mysticism, it's about expanding our, expanding our perspective. It reminds us that knowledge does not belong exclusively to logic or to intuition, but that both are vital lenses to explore the truth, the scientist and the mystic though walking different roads, may be gazing at the same horizon. Ultimately, the Tao of physics is a celebration of unity between matter and space, science and spirituality, reason and intuition. It invites us to remain humble, curious, and open-minded as we seek to understand this vast and mysterious universe. In the end, the Tao of physics is not about choosing between science and spirituality, it's about realizing they are two windows into the same truth. Stay curious, keep exploring, and perhaps you'll find that the universe is far more connected than we ever imagined, and we hope it's been valuable to you. If you're interested in more titles with similar themes, leave a comment with your thoughts and recommendations. You can also buy the book to experience it more clearly as well as support the author. I will leave the link in the description below for you to easily search. If you like the channel, you can press the like button, share and turn on the notification bell to receive new content. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.